Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a lecture on gastro dilatation torsion or volvulus that we see in the canine. This can be in a medical emergency. If the animal's stomach basically for this full and flaccid and it will basically, and the animal moves around, it will slosh back and forth and flip over. It flips from caudal to anterior essentially in this direction in a dexter rotary fashion essentially and what that does is it occludes the opening and the closing of the stomach and then the dog basically continually this is like having to burp after you drink uh, pop real quickly as the dog forces air down its thoracic area essentially can force air into its stomach so it gulps air and swallows air forces more air into the stomach but it can't burp it back out because it's flipped on itself and it produces this phenomenon where the stomach actually in the pylorus is closed down and the stomach is flipped on itself on x-ray it's tympanic too when we take the dog and tap it on the uh, left side for instance very commonly we will find a tympanic like activity where the animal is obviously full of gas and can't pass it now these dogs can die in a couple of hours or they can be a couple days of, of being really really uncomfortable you can look at these animals that they're worried you look at their face and they look like they're really worried because they are and they have a problem. The underlying cause is a dysautonomia, essentially, because these animals have elevated sympathetic tonus, decreased parasympathetic tonus, and that causes the spasming of the, the opening and the exit point of the stomach to actually spasm those muscles. The pylorus is spasming and the stomach is op opening is spasming, and when it spasms, it twists to the right, which is pulling that stomach forward and to flip this direction essentially it's going to it's being continually pulled that way and it doesn't take much for the flaccid stomach which is parasympathetically innervated the parasympathetic is down now so it isn't able to vomit the vomition is basically a parasympathetic phenomenon that causes the rugae to spasm and then food comes out of the stomach in this case the parasympathetic is decreased the sympathetic is increased so you have this twisting that's going uh, that's flipping the stomach that direction and the stomach itself the, the fundus of the stomach is just a flaccid sac that doesn't have the ability to get rid of anything or burp anything out essentially so you have you have a perfect storm of phenomena that's occurring right there and the underlying condition you know, is basically going to predispose an animal that gets a big meal or a big bunch of water and goes out and rolls around and can easily flip that stomach over and of course that's a big problem for deep chested dogs we see the problem in small dogs too but it, they don't flip their stomach over. We end up with esophageal achalasia and some other kinds of disease conditions, which we discuss in another lecture. What we do with these animals, of course, is adjust them regularly, but we're going to do a somatovisceral adjustment. We discuss somatovisceral adjustments essentially extensively in Module 4 uh, in the uh, VOM technology course, which you can see on, on uh, the vomtech.com website. It's too much time for us to, uh, not enough time for us to show it here, but we go through and what we do is reestablish normal sympathetic tonus, which is artificially elevated due to injury and, and, and neurological interference along the spinal cord. It actually drops back down and allows the parasympathetic come up when the sympathetic goes down the spasming of the opening and the closing point of the stomach basically relaxes and also the stomach's rugae basically because parasympathetic comes back up again is able to actually force stuff out of there now these animals may have to be too they may have to have a surgery after we open them up and clear them out essentially so they won't flip their stomach again and we would recommend that that actually be done if we're worried about it however many 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 animals that we have done this therapy to do not have to have surgery it's just kind of a flip of a coin who wants to take a, a chance on that the surgery involves going in there and taking the stomach and just basically tacking it down to the stomach to the side of the body wall so it cannot flip and that doesn't stop the problem it stops the disaster that occurs when we have gastrodilatation torsion when we use the the um, a frequency specific laser technique We'll also use 216 cycles per second as a means to basically treat these, uh, the condition. 216 is a sympathetic overstimulation frequency, what allows us to basically irritate the sympathetic system and that causes it to reset. We're actually making it worse until it resets. You can actually see that in the animal when you do it too because the animal goes usually about 30 to 40 seconds into the therapy. Also, we'll use a frequency for the stomach, which is 83, for the colon, which is 20, and a frequency for the jejunum, which is 96. Those frequencies are all used essentially as a means to do that. We have been able to treat these animals without touching them by just doing this, and then all of a sudden the animal starts burping, farting essentially, 
and move the system through the, system, the deal. However, as I mentioned to you, this is a medical emergency and where you might want to use this right off the bat, you should be basically be loading the animal into the car and getting it to a vet immediately as this can be an emergency and can take the animal's life in, in as little as two hours. So I would mention that to you. Also, when we release that stomach, essentially the body basically releases what's called cardiac depressant factor from the pancreas that gets um, trapped in this particular area and injured because of lack of blood and that can actually suppress the animal's heart to the point where that can kill the animal too. So this animal needs a big blast of corticosteroids regardless of how we treat them. So regardless of what it is that we see here, this dog is going to the vet. Okay, and so uh, it is a medical emergency, and I'd have you not just use frequency-specific low-level laser therapy as a means to uh, fix this animal, although we've done that before. It is potentiality. The potentiality for disaster is certainly there. You do not want to be the last person to touch the animal before the animal passes away because it didn't get to a vet. This has been a lecture on frequency-specific low-level laser therapy, essentially, and uh, the condition of valvulus or gastric dilatation torsion in the canine, essentially. These elements and the neurophysiology of this is not necessarily known by my, by my colleagues in the veterinary field, essentially, and there's a lot more that I can tell you about this particular disease condition if you, if you take the time to give me a call, and I'll give you more information about the etiopathology of this disease condition, how it is that we're able to successfully and have been able to successfully not only treat it but keep it from recurring. I'm Dr. William Inman. Please visit the vomtech.com website and I'll give you more information about this technology, how to do it, why it works, and how to apply it in your practice. This is not an infomercial. I would like to basically provide you with that data for free for the benefit of your clients, essentially. Thank you and have a great day.